All right, good evening, astro nerds and astro nerdettes. Welcome to the Astro Imaging Channel on this fine Sunday night. Tonight, we have Bob Denny with us, who is the author of ASCOM and Alpaca, um, the uh, the inventor, I should also say. Um, he uh, He's going to be talking about Alpaca tonight and what how it's uh, going to change what ASCOM looks like. He can explain it better, but um, the successor to ASCOM. And uh, it's going to be something that will be compatible with Windows and Linux and Mac. So no longer will the Mac users have to be very sad that they do not have access to ASCOM. So get excited. Um, and uh, let's see. Before, but before we uh, jump to him, let me show what, uh, what other talks we've got coming up here for you to get excited about. Oh, they changed the layout of how to share a window. Oh, that's fun. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, our very boring looking version of this calendar. Um, so we have, why is this on a weird date? Okay. Next week, we have Adam Block coming on to talk about his new Stretch Academy series of videos and uh, give, give some advice on how to do stretching really well. After that, we have the author of Frank Sacken, uh, the author of Graxpert, Frank Sackenheim, coming on to talk about using Graxpert, which is that gradient removal software that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. And we've got some other folks coming on after that, talking about all manner of topics, including uh, a gal from the Space Science Telescope Institute talking about James Webb, um, another, uh, some other, yeah, all kinds of folks coming on. So lots to look forward to. Um, yeah, and uh, let's see what else I have on my list here to talk about. Uh, so I posted another short uh, from last week, Alex's present, or let's see, week before last, recently, Alex's presentation on uh, on off-axis guiding. So everything you wanted to know about off-axis guiding, all in one presentation. So go check out that short. I'm going to have galleries up here in the next couple of days, hopefully, maybe, on um, how to do image acquisition on a Mac that she presented as well. And we've got all kinds of shorts on all kinds of topics so that you can have quick access to how to do many of the things that we talk about on the show. So, uh, and, and if you have any suggestions for things we've, we've done in the past or things that are on shows that we're having now, like, hey, this would make a great short, you can drop it in the YouTube comments as we go along or contact us on our webpage on, under the contact us button to say, hey, you should do, you should do this clip from this one show. And uh, we will eventually make that happen, Patrick or I. Uh, all right, so um, I'll, uh, Bob Denny, he's a software developer. He invented ASCOM. He did a lot of web server development back when Windows was was very young and, and naive. <laughs> and um, he actually has an asteroid named after him, asteroid 23257, as I discovered on Wikipedia. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I will turn it over to you. Me? OK. Yes. <laughs> Well, good evening, everybody. I'm honored to have been invited to present here. My goal tonight is to let you know where Alpaca is going in the future. Well, and ASCOM, because they both are intimately married to each other. And the way it's supposed to work is it's a migration from ASCOM to Alpaca, not a sea change or an instant change. So, you know, where you have to switch over from one technology to another and that's really the most difficult part of what we've done i want to correct one thing i'm the guy who thought up ascom and i kind of pushed it for about 10 or 12 years but the people who are doing all the heavy heavy lifting right now from the programming side are <clears throat> peter simpson in the uk and daniel van nord who's one of the developers for optech those two guys have done most of the heavy lifting. Most recently, I've been working on um, doing uh, Python implementations. Just a minute, I'm going to have to call. Sorry about that. So where I've been working is on the Python area and trying to, because Python's the most pa most popular language in for astronomers, and I've tried to provide Python people a way in to being able to control devices without knowing how they work internally. And that's really what ASCOM is all about, to give you a set of things that you can do that every telescope or focuser has to be able to do for you, 
but without knowing all the bits and pieces that are going on inside the device. It's a device independent architecture. Okay, so where is ASCOM going? The long-term vision is devices like a mount or a focuser or a camera will be all independent. They'll operate within their box and then have a Wi-Fi or Ethernet port, and then that's it. That That's where all the magic happens. It's a driverless architecture. So a program on Linux, Mac, Windows will just have code within it, which can connect over very common internet protocols and see the device out there, connect to it, and use it without knowing anything about the specifics of that device. So I'm going to show you an example of that. Um, cross your fingers, folks, because there's a lot of moving parts in this, and I'm not. I'm hoping that the uh, uh, that this will go. First of all, we have a Raspberry Pi, which I'll show you now. I'm going to be doing a lot of window switching by ne of necessity, so I am now logged in with VNC to a Raspberry Pi. Now this is showing. I take it. I can. Uh, you're presenting. Yeah, it looks like it's doing it. Okay, great. Yeah. So this is just a Raspberry Pi. On here are what what you're looking at right now is a set of simulators that is available to anybody and runs on any platform and exactly simulates all of the various ASCOM devices. You can see them along here. Camera, cover calibrator, dome, filter wheel, focuser, rotator, telescope. That's what we're going to deal with. So this is now, you can consider this Raspberry Pi as though it were a mount with a Wi-Fi and a, and a controller in it. So let me show you what I have sitting here. Stop presenting. Okay, that's good. So what you're looking at is this Raspberry Pi right here. This could be a mount or, in the case of a focuser, or whatever. But this is all this is. And what I'm logged into now is this Pi. I'm going to go back to that and show you that again. Share. So you get the idea, right? This is You, you could assume that this was a, uh, uh, a mount somewhere. So now I think... What am I trying to do here? The next thing I'm, I need to do is to show you my Macintosh, which I will drop now this screen here and switch over. Not Macintosh, my, um, my iPad. So I wish I could show you how I do this, but you just do screen sharing. It takes just a few seconds to get this screen sharing going, so just be patient. It, it's about 10 seconds for each stage of this. All right, there is that part. And then one more thing here. Just be patient. All right, and the magic number is 1746. 1746 for my iOS screen share. So now I'm mirrored, and I have – now I just need to share this. Patience, because this is – there's a, like I say, there's a lot of moving parts. All right. So now what you're looking at is my iPad running Sky Safari 7. And I kind of have to lean over here to get to it. I don't want to hang myself on my uh, – earbuds. All right. So if I want to connect to that self-contained Wi-Fi mount, I can go to telescope presets. I don't want the demo interface. I'm going to add a preset. Are you able to see this, Molly? Can you see what I'm doing right now? Uh, it looks yes, like you're, seeing yeah. the, uh, you're in the settings screen. Yes, right. So I'm going to add an ASCOM alpaca telescope to Sky Safari and do the scan of the network. 
ah, there it is, alpaca telescope simulator. That's the thing that's running on the Raspberry Pi. It found it. That's all there is to it. So now I go next and save this preset and use it. Exit from the settings. And then all I have to do is connect. Bing. Did you hear the little ding? I don't think so. No, that, that ding came through. But anyway, it connected. So if I now want to slew somewhere, go to... I hope the sound is coming through, but you can see the telescope slewed, right? Yes. Yes, the green dot. Oh, yeah, it's it's right there now at Denebola. So I'm now able to slew the telescope from mm -hmm. Sky Safari. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see. I can just um, maybe get in here to the center of it. And you can see it move. So now if I move it south, let me make sure it's not going to go too fast. I'll set it to slew speed of two and then move it. See how it's moving? Okay. And then go back like that. Is that, can you tell that what I'm doing is I'm controlling the mount from the, from the iPad? There's so no it's window. connected to your your telescope simulator that is the on running on the raspberry pi is that right correct there's okay. no <laughs> windows involved anywhere the ipad is talking to this to the telescope simulator on the pi which might as well be any ascom slash alpaca telescope they all speak the same language they all have the same functions they all have the same properties ascom and alpaca are identical in how they work functionally so and i'll show you how that works in just a minute but does this make sense i mean um somebody else tell me i don't do we have a way to have people ask questions or uh yes so is, uh we'll be keeping an eye on on the youtube chat uh and we'll we'll field those to you okay i tried to do that the last time was i was on here and it was too much for me to yeah watch yeah. youtube chat and do all this at the same time so but the point being that um what you're seeing on the ipad is uh what is running on the raspberry pi here now you see see where it says um the the ra and De the ra is 1136 and all that well that's where so now if i change if i slew on the uh on the um on the ipad to somewhere else I wish you could hear this sound. Boom. Did you hear that? It was supposed to work. No, but I can see the numbers ticking. All right. So now I've just slewed somewhere else. Well, it wasn't very far. So I got to do something a little farther. Go to. So you can see the RA and deck change, right? A few hours on deck, a yeah. couple hours on RA. So I'm doing that with the iPad. back to the iPad. I'm getting better at this. Now, I know you're, the Raspberry Pi is standing in for your telescope mount. What would this look like um, on, say, like a Celestron mount, for example? Aha. Okay. That's the next step. The Celestron doesn't have an Alpaca driver. So it is an ASCOM driver on Windows, right? CPWI, whatever. So here's the next thing we do. Now let's change things here to. I'm going to start a telescope simulator on Windows. And this is the old ASCOM telescope simulator. I'm going to let you see that next. You can see that, right? Not quite yet. There it is. Okay. That's the telescope simulator that's on Windows. This is, I mean, I could show you just so you can get a sense of uh, perspective here. This is kind of interesting. Entire screen. All right. So share. Yeah. Boom. All right. So I have 
this might even work better anyway. I have us, right? And there's the, the, there's the Raspberry Pi, which I'll close. Well, minimize. So actually, I'm, I need to do that to minimize that. So you can see that this is the this is the um, telescope simulator, right? So the next thing I'm going to do uh, the browser as well. Yeah, that's us. That's that's the show, right? Yes. So I can close that, I suppose. But then I you. can't change anything because it's uh, you know that's where my screen sharing controls are. Yeah, so I've got, it's a chicken and egg problem. So all right, I'm going to stop that now. Let's just think for a minute about that that simulator that's sitting on my desktop on Windows. Let's say that's the um, the uh, Celestron you said, right? Let's just say that's it. Yeah. So what we would do to make the Celestron, this is the magic. There's a program called ASCOM Remote, and I will share that next. All right, this crazy program, which Peter Simpson wrote, and this is actually the beginning of Alpaca when he first wrote this. This will put an Alpaca front end on any telescope or any other device that's on Windows with a traditional ASCOM driver, a focuser, a camera, you know, whatever, a dome. This thing can put an Alpaca front end on that. Let's just see how that works. All right. I want to expose a telescope in and specifically I want to expose the telescope simulator for .net to alpaca. So, that's all I have to do. There it is. All right? Now, we and let me go back to my desktop and if you can ignore what's going on behind here, I'll try to shove the uh the browser behind and show my desktop. Well, that's not going to be too effective. Let's just try it, though. All right, share. All right, let me. Yeah, that's that's terrible. Sorry. This is kind of challenging. I meant to share the the whole desktop. Let's try that one more time. Entire screen. Here you go. That's what I had hoped to do. Click, clack. And then pull ASCOM remote out front. Now, can you see the telescope simulator here? And then ASCOM remote showing here. And what this program does is it puts an alpaca front end on an existing ASCOM telescope. It could be plane wave, anybody, astrophysics, Celestron, whatever. If it has an ASCOM driver on Windows, now without Plane Wave or Celestron or any of them having to lift a finger, their telescope now speaks Alpaca. And to prove that, uh, Bob, yes, there's a tr there's a tremendous amount of information on that screen that you were just sharing, you know, one before it, and I don't think it's readable over on YouTube. It's not really important. That's a log yes. showing the the uh, the low level requests are you talking about in particular this thing here the ascom remote screen no it was just when you had everything on there at once including that as a small window well okay i'm just trying to prove to you. this is sitting next to the telescope simulator but i have the entire my my, my only alternative i can't show Two program windows at once on this thing so i showed my whole desktop well that thing is so wide and so huge that all you got is a bunch of postage stamps anyway this is the thing right here ascom remote that puts the alpaca front end on this telescope simulator can you imagine the window I just showed you sitting next to the window I'm showing you now, this is the telescope, and the thing I just showed you is the magic program that puts an alpaca front end on this classic ASCOM telescope. Does that make sense? Yeah. If not, I'll go back and I'll try to do a better job 
putting things into context. Uh, I think we're trying I to imagine what, what this would look like. Well, you're, you're probably getting into this in a bit. Cause like, I, I, this is still going through in our, in the Celestron case, you would still need CPWI, right? Whatever provides Celestron with an ASCOM interface, if that's CPWI or a Celestron driver from them or what, I, I don't know enough about the Celestron. What do I, if I have, you know, the Sky or I don't know. That's, yeah, that's another I, good example is the, the Sky X. What, what, what if I have Cartusiel or some other program? Nina, how do I connect to the Celestron? Do I connect to CPWI or do I connect to an a, a separate ASCOM driver that Celestron provides for their telescope? I don't know what. I just don't know everything about all the telescopes out there. I don't know the answer to that. Well, um, okay, yeah, I won't. Can continue with your talk. I think more will become clear in, later. Okay. The point is, on Windows, there's an ASCOM driver that drives a telescope, and I don't know what that means. There's 30 different types of telescopes. They're all different. They're, Astrophysics has their driver in APCC. Plane Wave has PWI. Uh, Celestron has CPWI, which what? Is that is that the inter ASCOM interface, or is there a separate driver like for Astrophysics? Or I don't know, but somehow that Celestron has an ASCOM interface somehow. And that's what that simulator, this thing here, is supposed to stand in for any other telescope on Windows. That's what this thing does. Right. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I've done is I've told the ASCOM remote program, which you can have it start up by itself or whatever it's not important you don't have to look at it you don't have to do anything with this all it does is it connects the ascom telescope to the alpaca world that's all this thing does and it's so simple to set up as you can see what am i trying to to expose and which one boom that's it you're done so going back to get this right i have to go now to reshare my ipad that always takes about 15 or 20 seconds so patience is a virtue here 2783 This thing tight here. Boom. There we go. Okay. Now, now I'm back in. Now I'm back on my iPad. Remember, on Windows, there's a Celestron driver, and that simulator is standing in for the Celestron telescope. There's ASCOM Remote, which was a stupid program you only have to do like 10 seconds worth of setup on to expose it. And now I can go back, just disconnect. Now I've just disconnected from the, uh, uh, from that Raspberry Pi one. And I'll get rid of this just so you know that um, I'm doing something new. Now I add a preset for this and I go scan. Boom. Telescope simulator for .NET. Can you see that up here? Yeah. That is that little skinny thing I showed you. That would be, in your case, CPWI or whatever other Celestron thing is. But it would show right here as an automatically discovered device. Next. Save it. Use it. Connect. So, instead of, so basically, instead of um, connecting to CPWI, directly it's using alpaca as the bridge well cpwi has its own private celestron special nobody else speaks it protocol yeah that's not the idea of, of ascom it's supposed to 
hide all that specific stuff. This will work for any mount that speaks Alpaca or any mount on Windows that speaks ASCOM. So this could just as easily be plane wave, the sky, I mean, the sky, the paramount, astrophysics, any of them. That's the whole point is that now this alpaca speaking iPad program can talk to anything that speaks alpaca and anything that speaks ASCOM on Windows. Bob, could I ask a question, please? Um, of course. What does a manufacturer have to do to make his device speak alpaca? If it already has an ASCOM interface on Windows, nothing. It's there. Right now, I could talk to a plane wave, an astrophysics, CPWI. I just showed you. I can talk to a uh, CPWI or anything from Alpaca because of that ASCOM remote. And that's Peter Simpson's magic box right there. It, it converts mm -hmm. ASCOM to alpaca does that uh, make sense you take it does but what if i have a device that doesn't speak as calm for some reason well then you're out you're completely out in left field because even with alpaca right well let, well but you can write your device you could program your device to speak alpaca directly there's nothing stopping you from doing that but you Ooh, have to wait wait wait, wait what what do i need to know do i need to know programming language to of course you have to write okay. a driver Okay. And I'm going to say something about drivers now after this demo, but let's just keep going. Keep asking questions okay. because we're getting to the heart of the matter here. Okay. Yeah, but let, let us know. we got a bunch of questions piling up over on YouTube. Okay. So just let us know when you want them. I'll take them right now. All right. If people are, understand what I just did, then I'll take all the questions I can get. All right. So, uh, here's a comment from Marcia. This seems like an open ASI error. Is that? Well, I want to put something into perspective here before we get too far into this, and that is, um, I, I'm going to show an image and then say something about it. Uh, and that image is this thing. This is really like doing a presentation, but unassembled. So pardon me for the switching of screens, but I want to show this image while I answer that question. When I talk about Alpaca and ASCOM, I, I have to say I'm not getting into a standards war. I'm not going to try to compare ASCOM and Alpaca with ASI Air or, well, all they, they actually use Indy. And I'm not going to talk about any of that because it's pointless. You know, every time I give a talk like this, somebody goes, well, what about Indy? What about it? All we do in our group is we try to provide the best and we try to provide the most support and the most information and whoever, you know, whatever you want to use, you use this really, I, I don't want to try to compare what we do with somebody else's ideas. So it might look like an open ASI air fine. It's open but I'm not going to compare it to ASI Air or uh, Indy. I'm just not going to engage in that. And I'm sorry. Okay. If well, no, to... no, that's a fair question. A fair, uh, fair uh, answer. Sure let's, let's move on to the next question. Okay, uh, next question. How would you connect to multiple Wi-Fi devices at the same time? I'm not sure I understand that. Multiple Wi-Fi. Oh, um, each... Each device, so so if if you have, I, I think I understand the question. I don't, you don't, unless the device they're talking about is like two telescopes or two focusers or five rotators or something like that. The, the alpaca standard will handle multiple instances of a single device and it will also handle multiple device types. So let's take the more common situation which it would be an observatory with a Wi-Fi alpaca mount, focuser, 
filter wheel, camera, and dome. Let's just say that. And weather. Each time, each one of those is a separate internet connection, and you only have a physical wire or Wi-Fi, but they all can connect, and they all can be on different addresses if they want, or they can be on the same address. If you noticed that um, in Sky Safari, I did a discovery, and it goes out over the local network, and it finds all these devices on all their 192, 168, one dot x y z z y it finds them and collects them and then finds out for each of those devices which types of ascom devices as in a so focuser or a dome or everything you it, it will you can you can find out which addresses have which devices on them and it collects it it's up to the app developer to locate all these with a simple call and i that, now we're getting into programming, and I don't want to do that, but it's totally possible to connect from a program like Nina to multiple devices, each of multiple types, if that answers the question. The, the protocol I think, his concern, I think his concern was about um, if you're connecting direct to the computer, the computer can only be on one Wi-Fi network at a time. Is this going through a router? Oh, that's a, okay, no. Alpaca is designed, well, you can pipe it, you can use VPNs, you can use um, all, it's designed to work in a confined environment. Alpaca is not for public internet. It's really crazy. If you think about it, if you ever expose your observatory to the public internet, now you have all of the, the security issues of everything. I mean, it, you, you basically have to armor it against all kinds of attacks and things having dealt with universities and government agencies they're going to want to keep that observatory in a confined environment and that would mean either vpns or you know vlan type well, environment even if, even if it's isolated the your your computer in there can only be on one wi-fi network uh, so would you have a router in there that's off the internet, but connects all those devices together to the computer? Normally you would have all of your devices on one LAN. Why would you want two LANs in an observatory with a router? When well, you can I, think, I think it was asking like 255 so devices on one LAN. The, the focuser has Wi-Fi and the camp and the mount has Wi-Fi, but you can only connect the computer to one or the other. So would oh. you need to connect all of those to a single router in order to access them? When you say router, I don't mean a, you don't mean a router, you mean an access point so that all of those devices sure. are on one LAN. Yeah, one LAN, but each have their own IP address, but the same subnet. No problem know. there. It's when you say router, I think of going from one LAN to another or out to the public internet. So I'm sorry I misunderstood that. You need to have, what you call a router, which I would call a Wi-Fi access point, sure. where each of the devices have their own IP address. And each device can be reachable from your computer or computers. Does that make sense? Did I answer that clearly enough? Yeah, yeah. I think this person was thinking that you would need to, um, it's like on a single computer without uh, an access point to connect all those devices together, you can only connect to one at a time. I think that's you what the concern was. Right, no, that's okay. not, you gotta have, I wish I had my little um, baby router with me, but for what, $30, I bought this little router that has, uh, you know, what the hell, if you'll give me a minute, I'll go get it. It's pretty cool yeah. and it's only 30 bucks and that's what you need. You need some kind okay. of a router. You don't need to be connected with any other LAN or public network, but you do need an access point so that each of the devices has its own IP address on 192.168.star yeah. or okay. whatever you want to put it in. Okay, we so got a couple more questions. Uh, okay. I know. All right, so I think you've answered this, but does this mean that each maker has to support Alpaca either in its own built-in computer or firmware-based uh, OS, i.e. ask on Windows driver moves to a hardware implement Alpaca protocol? Or does, no. as long as you have an AFCOM driver, are you all set? Right now, if you have a traditional ASCOM driver, you're done. But that means that your machine or your thing or your focuser or whatever is plugged into a Windows system, right? 
because ASCOM is only traditional ASCOM, COM ASCOM is Windows only. So if you have a focuser, let's say, that runs on Linux that you, oh, and you don't have a Windows system and you want to sell this focuser to somebody with only runs Linux, well, then the focuser vendor or whatever, or they hire, and I'll talk about this later if we have time. Um, it, time's going pretty fast. Uh, Third-party drivers, there's problems with that, and I'll talk about that if we have time. I hope we do because it's a quality issue and a responsibility and troubleshooting issue. But anyway, somehow someone has to write an alpaca driver for that thing, and it could either run in the firmware on the device, which would have its own Wi-Fi or Ethernet, or you could hook the focuser to your Linux machine, well then somewhere on that Linux machine there needs to be a driver that would be the alpaca equivalent of today's ASCOM drivers on Windows. Somehow the clients, the, the, the programs that use this focuser have to see that thing on an IP address and be able to talk to it with HTTP. That's the key. So it's either in the device or it's in the Mac or the Linux machine to which the device is connected, if that makes sense. Okay, so moving right along, uh, Chris asks, what's the protocol Alpaca is built on? JSON, HTTP, TCP? All of that. It's TCP, HTTP, JSON. And it's very, you can find out all you want to know about that by, and I will bring up a browser here, someone asked, and I'm, I don't want to waste people's time because I had hoped not to make this too uh, technical. We but, got a few more questions, Bob, if you want to move it along. I just want to show where to go to get the info. There's okay. A, there is this website, which is ascom-standards.org. Everything you want to know about ASCOM and Alpaca is right here. Everything. And the, and the, the to, to be specific to answer your question, what is the Alpaca protocol? So I went to what? Okay, it's so obvious. Documents. Then you scroll down here. End users? No, you're not an end user. You're a developer, if you want to know about that blood and gut stuff. And then you go down and find the ASCOM Alpaca API reference right there. Download. And that will bring up a uh, PDF file that describes everything. All of the the json and the various so this is all blood and guts which i don't want to get into more than about another five seconds that should answer your question this is where you go to get the info whoops uh about that and yes it's on http json and tcp so that's the okay. answer to that question so. next next question i think you've answered this one how does the system handle multiple connected devices? That's what you were just talking about a couple of minutes ago. You're on a LAN. Basically, you're on a, the, the same way that your house runs on multiple connected devices. The same thing. You've got somewhere in your house, you've got this thing with a couple of antennas on it, and all the Wi-Fi things that are in there, your, your phone and whatever the hell else, all talk to each other and out to the internet. Well, in the case of the observatory, you would not provide a link out to the internet. Well, you, you could, of course, but you couldn't provide, you wouldn't want to provide one coming in. You wouldn't want to map ports so that public people could get to your devices. But it's just like your house Wi-Fi. And hey, hey, Bob, I might be able to add some clarity here if I can ask a question. I think okay. what folks are getting confused is they're thinking of one computer per device, and I don't think that's your intention. I think your intention is to say with a single Windows computer, you could you could in effect house multiple drivers for your focuser, your mount, your camera, all on the same Windows computer that are all speaking Alpaca and all connecting to some other piece of software that speaks yes. Alpaca. Is that correct? Yes. On Windows right now, if you couldn't put a focuser, a mount, and a camera and stuff with drivers on windows you wouldn't have anything right the exactly. windows machine has to be able to support all of that stuff the dome everything so with all that stuff running with their own drivers on windows 
you go back to ASCOM remote and all of the things that are on the Windows machine. And I want to make this point clear as a bell. It None of this requires Windows. We're talking about devices now that are plugged into a Windows system and have traditional ASCOM drivers. So if you okay, got that. run this, this thing here and you say setup, I can put a camera, a dome, a rotator. I can do all that. And then when I hit OK, bam, all that stuff's going to be all of these things. See these simulators popping up one after another after another? Those are all now alpaca devices. But after that, you're still going to have to have software to capture, such as ACP, Nina, Voyager, to actually capture data. Or a planetarium is... that uses the, the telescope. Yeah, sure. But the capture programs, it, Nina and Voyager and all them, they run on Windows, so they don't even need Alpaca because they haven't got that in there yet. But what about the people on Linux and Mac? How do they get to these Windows resident devices today? The only way they can get them here is by speaking Alpaca. And by providing Alpaca to the existing devices that existing run on Windows, that are today's devices. And the whole point of this is that we're trying to provide a migration for people. So anything that has a device that plugs into your Windows machine and has a traditional ASCOM driver is already available on Alpaca by virtue of this magic device here, this magic program. And you saw how easy it is to set up. And you only just run it. You don't. There's no interaction with it at all. All right, next question. Now, what if I'm using a 32-bit driver on a 64-bit application such as Nina? Is this a solution to the 32, 64-bit issue? If you're using Nina and you're using a device that has an old-fashioned loadable 32-bit ASCOM driver. This has nothing to do with it. This is not an alpaca question. This is a question on how can Nina talk to something with an old fashioned driver. And if you'll capture that person's name, I'll talk and you put them on the um, ASCOM help list. I'll be happy to answer that question. But this has nothing to do with alpaca. This is a Windows programming, w Windows program, Nina or Voyager, talking to a Windows ASCOM traditional driver but with a bitness difference there are two different types of ascom traditional drivers there's a loadable one and a and an executable one the executable ones don't have bitness problems and they're the newer type and we were just in a meeting um earlier today actually where we're going to remove the the templates for the old-fashioned loadable drivers because it's causing so much trouble and they're easier to use, but we get so many beginners on ASCOM that want, you know, I, I need to write a driver for my homebrew, you know, and it, it we're just going to get rid of them. Anyway, go to the ASCOM help list, post your question there, and I'll be happy to answer it. Somebody will answer it. And it's okay. it's a pretty easy thing, but it has nothing to do with alpaca. So the answer is no, this is not a way to handle an old-fashioned loadable ASCOM driver. Traditional right. ask. Uh, next question. <clears throat> Do you anticipate that this will be used for cameras? Now, I thought it was used for cameras. They pump out a lot of binary data and need to move it fast. So any protocol that adds overhead will really slow things down. W what are your thoughts about that? Hmm. We have addressed the camera issue. Uh, it, it, it's been addressed with what has turned out to be a really, really good you're never going to beat usb3 for downloading gigabytes of data in milliseconds there's no way because this is either wi-fi or ethernet and right now we have cameras are in a transition and you have big cameras that need lots of short exposures and so you're you're downloading monstrous amounts of data and then stacking it and turning it into an image that's not the best system architecture Right now, we've done everything we can to make the speed 
of transfer as fast as possible. And Peter Simpson came up with this image bytes thing. And generally it has been, has made people quite happy. Uh, but cameras are, a, that's a whole different issue. Well, not different, but it's a much more expanded issue because there's a, ch a big shift in technology. For example, there's one camera we put about a year ago, we put the capability of being able to have the camera stack on board. So instead of sending back, you know, 50 images for a 10 minute exposure and then stacking them on the computer, you take your 50 images and in the camera, they get stacked and you get one big image back. That's in the protocol and in the, in the interface, it's been there for a while, iCamera version three. And so eventually this stuff's going to happen. There's one cam, one set, some cameras out there that already do that. And I expect that technology is going to continue where the cameras are going to keep getting smarter. But um, cameras are a tough one. There's nine other types of devices that ASCOM handles. The cameras are the most challenging and the technology is changing very quickly. And so, uh, yes. So to answer the question simply, yes, you can use, um, you could have a Wi-Fi camera that speaks alpaca but you would lose the capability of slow scan video, basically the type of thing that SharpCap does where it just stuck in images like crazy. You really do have to have a hard link on that. And I'm not sure where that's all gonna go in the future. We've tried to do the best we can to provide that. If you're just, if you're taking images for astro imaging where you're, um, you know, you're, eventually taking 10, you know, one minute or two or three minute images, but they're a bunch of five second images because of the way CMOS works, it's going to be tough. So I hope that's not too complicated an answer. Uh, it can be used. All the camera capabilities are there and you can take images with an ASCOM camera. If you can take an image with an ASCOM camera on Windows, which the ZWO cameras, they were very smart. When they came on the market, they came on the market with an ASCOM driver and it caused them to crush the competition because their cameras were instantly compatible with all of the imaging programs out there. Yeah, they have a native driver, which exposes some additional newer capabilities, but they got, that was very smart of them to do. And a lot of people still use that. Still, well, they just use it. So yes, and with Alpaca, that's all there. And I think the question related to relates to the speed across the internet of the image transfer, and it's not done with Base64 or JSON or anything like that. It's a separate channel with, uh, it's called Image Bytes, and it's a raw data transfer. And if you, you know, if you do stuff like that, you can do okay. I mean, people show videos on their, on their uh, computer, and this is video speed. It's pretty fast. So it's been taken care of inside the protocol for cameras. That's there. And, and as you were answering that question, we have a couple others that have popped up. So Keep them coming. Is there any way to use Alpaca with a wired connection? Wired. Sure. You can use Ethernet. Sure. That's Not a simple wide, answer. Not. Yeah. Uh, or you can put the driver on the Linux machine or the Mac and connect it with USB. But our vision on this is to get rid of the USB one way or another. I mean, it would be in the long run, but you won't be able to do that every all the time because that means you've got to put the whole damn alpaca inside your device. Some people will think, yeah, let's do it. Optech's doing that right now, but other people are going, nah, you know, so then you have to have a driver. If you have all the smarts in the in the device, you get a driverless device, no driver. But you can also have a device that is relatively dumb and hooks up with USB, and then the driver is on the Linux or Mac or the Windows machine. And so it's just kind of the same architecture. Drivers are important, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm looking at the time. Uh, we have a couple more questions. Would you rather go to another part of your presentation? No, I'm, I, I want to answer everybody's questions. Okay. I'm okay, so, doing the very best I can to do that. Uh, let's see. Is there an advantage to use Alpaca now instead of just remote into Windows DC that connects with traditional ASCOM drivers? If so, what's the advantage? 
you don't need windows. It, it gives you the ability to put a whole system together on a, on, on Linux or Mac. You're not dependent on the old windows com, but I'll go back and say the same thing. Cause I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm sorry. The windows com stuff is already made available to Alpaca by ASCOM remote. So you've got all of this, this whole spectrum of ways that you can do things. And that's what took all the time and the thought. And I'm going to give Peter Simpson again, and this is him right here. He gets the credit for the inspiration to do this. Peter lives in the UK. It, he's, he's the guy that came up with ASCOM remote. And it, it, if you've ever watched Bob Ross, you know who he is, right? The painter. He always talks about a happy accident. Well, Peter's idea with ASCOM remote was to be able to have a Nina on one machine, Windows machine, and then another device out in the observatory, a small baby computer with the ASCOM drivers on it, running all the devices, and then you could remote them across. Well, it was a happy accident, all right, because the protocol was perfect for making it completely device independent. So Peter gets the credit for some inspiration on that. And he's done a lot. I can't even, we don't have time for me to get into all of the things that he's done, but it's amazing. Okay, next question. I think there's some comments that probably, you know, in, after the program is over, we're going to have the chat up there. If you review the program, there might be some other commentaries on there that you would like to respond to. Uh, but next question it, I have is why, why do you want to eliminate USB? <laughs> that's, that's a challenging question. <laughs> no, it's not. All you have to do is get on cloudy nights and look at the at the trail of tears on there from people who blame the software, the computer, the program, the driver, and they go all around, well, turn this thing on, turn that off, switch this over, reload this software, uninstall, reinstall, and the end of the thread is, oops, it was a bad cable. There's so many of those. That's USB the answer. USB is the absolute devil. And from people it's, who I hear about who code devices and stuff, it's also very hard to code devices to work on USB. <laughs> well, I mean, it USB, was never, it was for keyboards and mice. And then it kept getting stuff added to it. It was a, the ultimate house that Jack built as far as the protocol. It, it and was not Jack intended to do what we're asking it to do. No. Not at all. And, and yet we're still doing it, all of us. Because it's cheap and people understand it. And USB to serial converters let people with really dumb devices continue to speak ASCII protocol over wires, which is like, dad, you know, we're it's 2023, guys. Okay, next question. Uh, so out in the field, we'd need to have a, a Wi-Fi access point. Or, in the field. or... or an ethernet um, switch, you know, the little box that costs $25 where you plug all your ethernets into something like that. Give me two seconds and I'll show you something. I'm sorry. I didn't have this at hand. And somebody in the uh, um, YouTube chat mentioned a, uh, a, a small portable router that can run on USB power. So you wouldn't necessarily have to have AC power for a router either. All right, here I here I come again. I get these annoying earbuds in my ear. Here we go. So I can hear. All right, this thing here. I, I took this to um, NEF and NAI, NEAIC. Arrgh. There's my router. That's it. It's got a little, uh, you know, Walwart power supply, or you can, well, it's USB Charlie, so you can plug anything, whatever you want in there to power How many it. ports do you have there? You got three ports? Well, it's got some Ethernet ports, a uh, couple. But here's the cool part. If you set this up in your observatory and see that USB thing right there, 
if you plug that into your iPhone, boom, you've got public internet availability. Nobody can get into your LAN, right? It doesn't, you, well, you could open ports on here, but that's nuts. But it would give you a whole like home internet in your, in the field. If your iPhone can get, um, I mean, that's not that important. You don't even forget that. Just forget the iPhone. This is what you need if your devices speak Wi-Fi. If your devices Who's speak, the manufacturer of that phone? I don't know. GL INET. Uh, but there's, I mean, so so the one you buy at um, Home D or, you know, Best Buy, instead of being small like that, it's just a little bigger, right? It's not that big. It's eight by five inches or something. I don't know. You know, just a typical Asus Wi-Fi router hotspot. That's, it beats the heck out of, well, where do, yeah. Anyway, that's the answer. Yes, you do need some kind of a thing that will provide you with a LAN. It's either something like this or an Ethernet switch, which is a, you, you plug that in and then it has like 16 Ethernet ports on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but for that, you're going to need power in the field. Oh, you need power for this too. Is that run on USB power? Or? Yeah, USB Charlie. It's minuscule. And the switch, I don't know. You, Yeah, I don't know. It. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what else to tell you. You're going to need to power your computer. That's where most of your power is going to go. So, um, in, with respect to the, uh, uh, like the multiple platforms. So we've been talking a lot about Whoa. devices that already have ASCOM drivers to work, uh, through windows. Um, it sounds like this is going to open up the possibility for people to do image acquisition with non windows machines. How, how, like, um, how will drivers work for that, I guess, with Alpaca? Well, you have to write the driver for the other machine, or unless you want to use the interchange with ASCOM remote and keep your and keep your devices plugged into Windows. That's today's world. We're hoping that people will actually write drivers to run on the Mac or on Linux. And, of course, if they're on Linux or Mac, a Windows program can access them also. So... And I'll show you that. I'm, I hope we don't run out of trouble. The ASCOM remote makes a device go on Alpaca. But I have another thing to show you where an app like Nina, or and I'm going to show you with my software, but it could be anything. And I don't have Nina here, so I can't do it with Nina. But it's it's just, uh, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll use Maxim. That's That's not mine, so I won't be compromised in terms of maybe trying to promote my own stuff. So, man, we'll show you how the chooser, which you... You know what the chooser is, right? When you want to, like, if you want to pick the telescope that's plugged in, and you you have to go to the chooser and pick the model of telescope, and that actually connects you with that driver for that telescope. Well, that chooser can make you an alpaca driver interface. It's a dynamic driver that turns your app, which knows nothing about alpaca, can talk to a native alpaca device. That's in that's there now too. So the the migration goes both directions. And so if you have an image acquisition program running on the Mac and it wants to talk to an alpaca device, you have a choice. You can either have a driver running on the Mac, right? Which could connect with USB to this dumb focuser, or the focuser might be smart and have its own alpaca interface. You can talk to that from the Mac. Is that, am I making sense? So um, sort of like with how companies were writing ASCOM drivers, they would now um, write Alpaca drivers that uh, that will be able to work inside this ecosystem, basically. I think I understand you. All of the technology that the ASCOM drivers, what we try, what the ASCOM initiative gives for tools for developers are two things. .NET, which is now totally cross-platform. It can be compiled, tested, and run on Mac, Linux, and Windows. And that's been that way for several years. So if you write something in C-sharp, it'll run on, and you pay attention to the pathing and, you know, the different directory structures and stuff, which you have to know anyway. 
Um, you can write a driver that'll run on any one of those platforms. The the if I remember, if you recall, I showed you the. This is much. We ended up getting really deep into these questions. Hang on, I'm going to show you something here. This is the Omni Simulator. This this is all written in C sharp. And it simulates all these devices. It's running on Linux, but you can take this same thing and run it on Windows. And you can run it on the Mac. The, you can download a simulator like this. It'll run on any one of those three platforms. So, of course, you could write a ASCOM driver for your thing that it would run on any of those platforms. So the whole point is trying to get away from being dependent on Windows. And a lot of this is development related stuff. And I'm sorry, uh, you know, this is plumbing. I'm talking about plumbing right now. So inevitably, I'm going to end up talking about plumbing. Did that help you with your question? I, I think so. I think we're just trying to see how, um, what this will look like for us and what makes it different from the ASCOM that we already have. Uh, where, yeah, I, I, I think we're getting there. <laughs> well, the difference between what's there now is you're on Windows by definition, right? We still have to um, hope that the manufacturers will start writing uh, drivers or uh, the ability to communicate over the over Wi-Fi or Ethernet with Alpaca, right? That's right. They're going to okay. have to, and and I wanted to get into this later, but you're absolutely right. If the drivers, if the manufacturers don't lift a finger, then all we're going to have is a bunch of devices that require Windows, and that's it. What you get, however, is people who want to write applic applications that run on Mac or Linux can still get to those things, even though the manufacturers couldn't give a rat's you know what, and don't do anything. They can still get to it with Alpaca. So that half of the equation is there. The other half would be if you want your devices to run on other device on other OSs, well, now the manufacturers are going to have to write the drivers or build the uh, uh, Alpaca into their devices, one of the two, so that it frees you. You get freed from Windows. And, and that's Bob, what, what has their appetite to... been? What has their what? appetite been to do that? Well, Optech's doing it right now. Um, and, and this is all part of what I had planned on doing. They've been doing it for two years. Right, uh, the the latest, um, it's been good. Uh, the latest Boltwood cloud sensor, you know that we know what I'm talking about, right? The 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 thing that yes yes monitors the weather and Boltwood cloud sensor three is Wi-Fi alpaca. So they they did that. Um, as far as oh, uh, there's an outfit called Dark Dragons. And they built an entire observatory control system, roof controller, weather, everything. All of that's Wi-Fi alpaca. So the ball, the snowball is is getting bigger. Um, and and I don't know how to answer your question. How what's the appetite in what units? You know, what am I supposed to do? You know, happiness units or what? But it's it is it is snowballing. People are taking it up, and it's working. And is there appetite to also like I only have in my whole I have a my, my whole backyard of four complete astrophotography rigs. I have exactly one device that has a Wi-Fi connection on it. Are manufacturers starting to look at putting Wi-Fi on more devices? And at what point does that start making a complicated Wi-Fi environment? I don't know what you mean by a complicated Wi-Fi environment. How complicated is a Wi-Fi environment with ten Alexa boxes in the house? Can, you know, I guess free, I'm thinking Star uh, Party, but uh... <laughs> ah, that's a, there, there is an issue. Yeah, you probably don't want to put the entire Star Party on one Wi-Fi, or or even like uh, everybody's going to have their own their own router. Sure. But like, right. there's still you know, there's only so many 2.4 gigahertz channels, right? <laughs> well, and plus, I mean, you get you can do a lot. Uh, whole hotels run on Wi-Fi, right? But they 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 even partition them in, among different routers. So th the best way to go to a Wi-Fi party with this, I mean, a, a star party with this is to have your own little $35 router box and 
run everything yourself and not worry about some bad actor. You know, somebody with some, some, you know, Arduino homebrew thing that this guy wrote while he, you know, in the evening and then this thing gets on Wi-Fi and crashes. You're exposing yourself to everybody else if you don't just run your own LAN. I'm just having bad memories of uh, living in an apartment and not being able to transmit 2.4 gigahertz signal 20 feet across the house because there was 30 other networks that were stomping on it. <laughs> well, well, but anyway, that's a, that's that has anything more, to do with that. Can, uh, deal with that. That's a, the same problem with a hosted facility, and those people know what they're doing, and they it's. I can't answer that. Yeah, it, yeah. In, in any case, if, if you so, think that's a big problem, we might as well just give up and go home, right? <laughs> Bob, I mean, you're talking about connectivity, but at the end of the line, that is the user sitting in front of the computer, he has ACP, he has Maxim, he has Nina, he has Voyager, and and you aren't uh, you aren't really helping them. They're going to be running on Windows probably. Uh, and and so they're going to have to connect through whatever means, whether via Alpaca or ask them drivers. You're still, I don't want to say stuck on Windows, but you're still on Windows. There's no way around you're that. Only, you're only stuck on Windows because the people who write those applications are stuck on Windows. But we that's gotta, where we I, are right now. I mean, well, you're, I what know, you're doing have, isn't, isn't, in, isn't causing you to write an application for a nuke, right? If we don't look ahead and provide a way for an app developer to write an app like Nina on Linux and still talk to these devices, then we've failed. They're not doing it now because they haven't had a way to do it now. There's no financial motivation for them. I, well then, why are we being, doing this? We might as well I don't, just I don't know go if I home, agree with that. Roll up the roll up the rug and go home. Eric, I'm sorry, yeah. that's just not where we're going. We're trying to make open you know up what? the detector. Well, be, be yeah, I understand where you're good. going, but this is the environment that we live in now. And Correct. what's gonna cause them? What's gonna cause you to write an application ACP to run on the Mac or Windows? I'm not sure if it does or it, it doesn't, but if it doesn't, it doesn't I'm you know, ACP is not, I'm 77. ACP is not going to get a total rewrite in another language. It works. We support our customers. I don't know. I can't speak for SGP, the guys that do SGP or Voyager or Nina or, Nina. or Maxim guys, none of them. I can't speak for them. All I can tell you is our goal is to provide them the opportunity and the capability of being able to do that if the market wants it. And we've heard nothing over the last 15 years, but why does this only run on Windows, you know? Okay, well, it doesn't anymore. That's it. Now, what are you going to do? That's a good end. You know, we've, we've kind of used up a good portion of our hour here. Uh, was there something else you wanted to pre present or do you want to hold it for another time? Oh, no, I have a few other things to show. And I'm hoping that um, I have to Really, um, there's just one more thing I want to show. If it, I mean, we, we're at 7.38. Don't we have till more like 8? Or what? We usually go for about an, for about a, an hour total. Um, well, it's been 40 minutes right now. No, I think. An hour and it's, it's been about an, an hour, hour 10. 10. Oh, that's fine. we're way over. Okay, um, my apologies. Then I have it, It's okay. It's not, I mean, to people are really interested in this. And, and so sometimes we go a little bit over off topics that people are really interested in. Well, that, yeah, I, I was off by quite a bit on these questions. They took could a I, long time, could, but I'm glad they I did could, because uh, I really could, want to make sure people don't have a lot of mis mis misinformation about it. Bob, could I suggest that we just hold off on any further questions and just yes. let you go oh. through, let, let's go through with what you had already decided to present it how many minutes do you figure it'll be i don't know um i'll, I'll do one more thing i okay you know and we'll kind of hold off, hold off the questions, questions. And keep, keep i had it thought. i had it down to right here <laughs> and i got this we'll just so. have to have you back <laughs> yeah um what what i wanted to show is let me get this all it'll take me just a sec to shut all this down and bring up one other 
so we know that we have that, that Wi-Fi based uh, mount, which is actually the simulator on the Raspberry Pi. Again, imagine that that is a Wi-Fi mount on the Raspberry Pi. So let's just say, well, I'm not going to use that. I'm, I'm going to use my own. I, I want to part. I want to ask for forgiveness for um, using my own. Oh, uh, here we go. No, that's no good because I was going to use cartridge shell, but it, it speaks native alpaca. And I don't know if I mentioned that, but that's another one. HN Sky, Cartusiel, they're both cross-platform. They both speak native alpaca right now. They're planetarium programs. Um, but I'm going to do this and just show you how to connect a telescope. Now, this, my program here, let, oh, let me um, get this here. This is going to maybe be a little bit... Uh, All right, everybody's seen the chooser, right? Cool. You've, you've encountered this plenty. Yeah. So, so in order to connect to an alpaca device, I've, I've got to, this window's hidden now, darn it, hold on. There it is. It just discovered I'm watching this happening and it's not changing on the it seems static Let's try this again oh it's just slow okay well oh there we go all right so it just discovered this raspberry pi and this could be any program maxim acp and all I have to do is hit an OK here. Boom. Now I've just selected in the chooser a Wi-Fi telescope that speaks alpaca. I'm running a Windows program. This is the flip side of ASCOM Remote. This is a Windows program speaking Windows Classic ASCOM, being able to talk out to Alpaca without the, the programmer having to do anything. So the next thing you see is, let me just make sure I got that right. Yes, okay, yes, and now, I know I'm taking a lot of time. I just want to make sure everybody sees that this is actually possible. This is, I'm just going to connect my software to the to this telescope. This software, my software has nothing. It does not speak alpaca at all. It's a venerable, mature, piece of software that speaks Windows com as com. But I'm talking to that Wi-Fi mount, which is the Raspberry Pi. So we've got it working both directions. If I turn the tracking on, you should see things start to change. Whoops, I got to do it over here. Sometimes I get mixed up. So can you see what that is, I'm, I'm, I know this is confusing. From a user's point of view, it should be completely transparent. Once you get all this set up, you just connect to the devices from Nina and start using it. You don't have to bring up ASCOM remote. You don't have to select it in the chooser, right? Once you've configured your telescope in the chooser, it's there and you're done. Molly, you look confused. I'm writing some messages on a YouTube trying to, um, I'm trying to think if I'm thinking about it right, where in the future environment where we want, uh, where we can connect uh, cameras and focusers and telescopes to let's say a Raspberry Pi, um, and then connect the, like through Alpaca, the Raspberry Pi 
interface to Nina, would the and the devices would have like an internal Alpaca communication protocol that goes over Wi-Fi to communicate with Alpaca on the Pi? Is that kind of what that looks like? <laughs> Am I totally off base? No, I'm using the Pi as though it were a device. Right. I think some people want to use the Pi as a device. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to show or here. As, as, yeah. as the device. Consider the, Alp consider the Raspberry Pi as the device. That's got the focusing motor control and all that stuff in there. It's kind of a sledgehammer for a focuser, but let's say it's a mount. All the mount control stuff, all the tracking, everything that runs the motors, everything is in the Pi along with the Alpaca um, interface capability. And now the whole thing, the mount, the entire thing is inside that Raspberry Pi. That's what I was trying to get people to imagine when I gave the demo, that that Raspberry Pi is standing in for a mount that has Alpaca yeah. inside of it. I think people want to be able to use a Raspberry Pi as their observatory computer that they then connect to on their Windows computer at home with and operate Nina or something like that. I, I don't get that. <laughs> I think that I'm I think on people a Raspberry are... Pi, I, and you want to run Nina on a Windows machine somewhere else, and I'm logged into a Raspberry Pi. Well, I don't, I don't know. know. I think like people are thinking that they want to. Um, well, maybe let's even step back further. Um, have a Raspberry Pi in their observatory dome that has some acquisition software that is yet to be released that will work on the Pi, and be able to connect their devices to the Pi. I think that's then they don't need Windows right. at all, right? I think that's kind of what they want, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the acquisition software is running on the Pi. All of their devices are running on the Pi. So if the devices that are con that are plugged into the Pi with what USB, oh Wi-Fi, yeah. let's or you know the LAN connection. Well, then everything's right there. Their as their their software is running on the Pi. Their Wi-Fi based devices talk to the Pi, and that's it. That they everything they're talking to their devices over alpaca and the wi-fi is right there their acquisition software is right there the acquisition software speaks alpaca and i one of the other things i wanted to mention is that i have i have myself written as as a alpaca package for python that lets you control any ascom or alpaca device from python and an sdk for drivers that you can write a driver an alpaca driver in python so if you had a focuser i have my, I, the, the demo that comes with the sdk as a rotator but it could be any device and i wish i could have shown all that i i it, it it's pure alpaca pure python and it runs on the pi so the acquisition software on the pi could I mean, why would it not be able to talk to i mean you'd use 128 Point zero point zero point one is the address, and you can talk to the alpaca. I don't know I, why am I getting mixed up about this. Why is it hard to understand why a program that runs on the Pi can't talk to a driver that either runs on the Pi or is based inside the device? Right now on Windows, you have acquisition software that runs on Windows and talks to the devices drivers on Windows, right? With classic comp. Well, so on the Pi, you write your acquisition software, it runs on the Pi and talks to an Alpaca driver on the Pi that then speaks USB to your device. That's exactly the same layout and architecture as what's on Windows with Classic Com, but instead it's running over Alpaca instead of Com. There's nothing that would prevent you from doing that. Except, right. okay. except I think that somebody has to write the software. That oh, is, yes, that just simply is, software. <laughs> it's simple software. Maybe simple that's software. a good jumping off point for you know the end of the program and a subject for another presentation that you can give in six months, Bob. Probably not. I don't want it. This is not the right environment for me to tell people how to program. Can we squeeze in one more question that's been asked a couple of times that piggybacks right on what we were just talking about, which is sure. is there any potential for Connecting Alpaca with Indy, which already will communicate on Linux to a variety of, of focusers and cameras and stuff like that. If somebody wants to write a bridge, fine. But we're not in the business of, of making things more complicated. We're just trying to give people the tools to do all of what we what they can do and to be able to migrate and talk across platforms today without people on Windows having to write new stuff. 
And that's been the big push recently. So um, where Indy goes, I don't know. And uh, whatever happens in the future, all we can do is do the best we can to make the transition as painless as possible, provide as many tools as possible in as many languages as possible and make it independent of any server or bus or any of that kind of stuff. It's all just point to point and cross, not only cross platform from a programming standpoint, but it also works, you know, internet across the platforms. And I don't want to, you know, I, I, I yeah, that's the answer. We're, we're not going to try to fight, fight a standards war on this. If somebody I... wants to ride a bridge, here's the problem. Uh, you know, we're out of time and unfortunately, but this is not an easy question because the philosophy of the two interfaces is different. And I don't want to get into more than that. If somebody wants to write me at rdenny at dc3.com, I will explain to them why we think where we're going, which is evolutionary and curated interfaces. That is fixed curated interfaces is the right way to go forward. So I think anyway, I, I could keep going, but I, I, my slide up at the beginning, I don't want to get into a standards war. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a leading question and I probably don't want to answer it. Well, yeah, I think that's what they were trying to make the point of instead of trying to compete with Indy, work with Indy, but yeah, we can, that's, we can have that discussion another time. <laughs> it makes it impossible for our, for us to deliver to our customers what we want. Cause we don't know where it's going. Once it goes in there, then what? And then they blame ASCOM and then, you know, it's that damn ASCOM and we've heard enough of that. And it's not ASCOM, it's a bad driver. So now putting two different protocols, which have different goals and different architectures and different philosophies and everything else and trying to plug a square peg into a round hole like that. No. Molly, I think you just opened up that can of worms. I oh, I did. But and I don't, that makes, that makes I'm sense. not going to go any further than answer. that. I think that's right. a satisfactory answer. Yep. And I'm going further okay. than that. Molly, are we, uh, are we there yet? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that unless, uh, I think that that's probably a good place to start to wrap things up. Uh, if I, if I didn't, if I didn't explain things well enough, I am, I apologize. This is very difficult. I had the goal going in of making it non-technical and right. people kept pushing me into the technical corners. Yeah. And it made it I mean, very yeah we have kind of a mixed audience. Yeah. To the, what, what it can do. I kept getting into the, how it can do it. And I didn't want to do that. So yeah, six months, if I could come on and we can set up a ground rule ahead of time that says, don't ask about plumbing. Don't put Bob in the in the position of having to explain what bits and bytes go where, how to hook up Wi-Fi and all that stuff. I just wanted to tell all you all what we're trying to do and how it's going to help everybody. That's really what my goal was, and it didn't work out so hot. So um, I apologize. Bob, it's I an mean, audience. You, you can't tell them when to applaud. <laughs> um, hey, Bob, could you once again tell us how to get a hold of you if we have some questions that we need to ask? Uh, should we go through the website? Uh, you you yeah, gave us an email address a bit ago. That's fine. R Denny, R D E N N Y, at dc3.com. Is there a chat window I can put that into? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get there. I don't want there. to get a bunch of spam mail by having it exist in text on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> okay. R D E N N Y at dc3.com. Thank you. That's good. Oh, you did great, Bob, according to Mr. Yes. New Pilot. Thanks, Bob, for the presentation. Thanks to TAIC for handling this so well. So you've done good. Molly? Yeah. Yeah. And we have such a uh, wide audience of people who want to know the technical details and then also people who aren't quite at the level of understanding all the technical details. So it's kind of hard to cater that whole audience. But yeah, I, th I think uh, with all these questions. I think we eventually mostly got there and we really appreciate your your time coming on here and trying to explain all this to us and the, the vision of Alpaca. And I think we're, we're excited to see where things go next, kind of this next evolution and how we connect our Astro devices to our computers and try to do a better job. And yeah, I all of us who had to fight with USB understand how much US, how much of a pain USB can be and hopefully Internet protocol addresses are better. So may I say one thing? Sure which I really wanted to end with. Eric hit the nail on the head. That is, things are not going to move in the market unless there's a market force 
unless people want this to change, unless people want something else. Exactly. We heard a lot about, well, it doesn't run on Mac and it doesn't run on Windows. I mean, on um, Linux. Okay, well, now we have laid the, plowed the field and there it sits. You can plant and grow crops in those fields now. We can't do it. We're not going to write all that software, but we put it in a, we put things in a position where it can be done. It won't happen unless people want it. We've heard a lot of people tell us they want it. Well, what next? So if you're a user and you want to do this sort of thing, the people to talk to are the people who make the software and the devices, not me, because we don't do either one of those things. But all we can do is fertilize the field, tear down the fences, allow it to happen, and then where it goes from here, well, all we can hope is that it that the flowers start growing. All right, Molly, you're in charge. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Bob. And uh, we'll, 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 I'm sure we'll have you on again to continue to keep talking about this. And uh, yeah, take us out. And, uh, hang with us. Uh, we continue. I will. Yeah.